Here we go. Hello, everyone. This is Supreme Decisions, and this is the Supreme Decisions Legal Minute Podcast. Well, today we're doing something a little different. Not necessarily, but this is going to be the episode that's going to be going out on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts. And I want to do it with the video this time because I haven't done that in a while. And I'm probably going to be doing a couple more podcasts this week simply to kind of catch up and get us back on track to where we were going. Because, you know, at one point we were talking about weaponizing your defense, putting us in better positions to actually defend ourselves and also getting more in depth in the actual law context and even concepts of not necessarily greater understanding, but more aggressive application, but also starting to understand those that are applying the legal system against us. And today is something that I wanted to address. Well, it's actually an older topic because I've kind of pointed on to it in the last, I want to say two or three podcasts that were back in March. But this one is also going to deal with qualified immunity and a couple of applications. But I'm going to give you a couple of nuances that I didn't give you in the first three. And I hope you guys are ready. Got your headphones on because it is in stereo. You got your yak. Well, I don't have any yak tonight. I have my Arizona sweet tea. Well, it's actually RX Energy, but it's still Arizona. And I hope you guys are ready to actually improve the audio because I actually had to get a couple things together. But what we're going to do is now get a deeper understanding of what the context of qualified immunity is and some of the verbiage you will have to compete with when dealing with police officers and suing them. And most commonly under under a 42 USC 1983 Act, or as a cause of action. So, let's get ready. Now, qualified immunity. Under the doctrine of qualified immunity, government officials are protected from damages, liability, and suits brought under the 42 USC 1983. Now, here's one of the caveats. So long as their conduct did not violate a clearly established right of which a reasonable officer would have known. Now, why do I highlight that? Because in the videos prior you heard, or in the podcast prior, you heard me state clearly established, clearly established, clearly established. 